If you enjoy the video and my content, please consider supporting my channel over on Patreon at patreon.com slash katedidart. Thanks so much! Hello, hello, my adorable squidlings. It's been quite a while since I've done a versus video, so today I am going to be doing one of those. I'm very, very excited. My patrons actually voted on this one, so you should go thank them uh, <laughs> for choosing this one in particular. So today I am pitting the Kudatake Gem Colors 6 set versus the Fine Tech Pearlescent Colors 12 set. Now, I'm not actually pitting up all 12 colors. I'm picking out the closest ones in the fine tech range and pitting them up against the Kudatake ones. Now, um, before we get into the actual stuff, I do want to give you some information on both of these. And while I do that, I'm going to be taking this out. Actually, we're going to look at the package first. So, on the back, you can see all of the different colors, um, pretty much as they appear in the pan. The pigments are characterized by high light, fastness, and resistance, and they have excellent gloss and opacity. Um, and these are high quality made in Germany. Um, I believe they've rebranded since, and they're now Colero. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but on the side here it says calligraphy, painting, graphic, art. And I'm going to go ahead and take this one out. This one comes in a really nice metal tin, super handy, especially if you're mixing these colors. Um, and again, it comes with 12 pans here. I'm only going to be using these in the verses. I'm going to be using these three colors. I'm going to be using these two and then this one. So um, don't mind the other colors, I guess. I will be having my own separate review on these, don't worry. But for now, I'm just going to be doing the other ones. I'm not going to go into all the details because I'm going to be doing a review, so we're just going to be looking at the paints. And then for the Kudatake set, um, these ones come in a little cardboard box, and inside is more cardboard actually. Uh, and here's this little set, it's very quaint, um, they come in their own separate pans as well, and we've just got a little rainbow from red to purple. Um, now you can't actually see the color names unless you speak Japanese, but they do have color numbers. And now. These are both mica paints, so what that means is they're very, 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 very shimmery and very pretty, and honestly, they're both gorgeous in their own right. Um, however, one thing I need to do before we get started is I need to get the pans ready, because with each of these, you actually have to let the water sit in them a little bit just to get them going, um, because they do take a little bit to get started. In all of my tests of these, the Kudatake always needs a little less water than the Fine Tex. Fine Tex do need quite a bit of water to get started, um, so I'm going to go ahead and give these each three drops from my water brush pen. That was three, maybe four, I don't know. Uh, and then I'm just going to give these ones each two, and actually I think that might be too much. And just kind of let them sit and uh, stir a little bit while we talk. I'm not going to be doing an art piece in today's video, so um, I'm just going to go ahead and just talk while these sit around. I think um, I'm going to aim for a few minutes, I don't know yet, but... Um, so anyway, as a price comparison, the Kudatakes come in at about 7 to $8, depending on where you live for shipping and stuff. The Fine Text, now this whole set cost about $30, but if you cut it in half, it would be about $15. So you can get the Fine Text at Blick, you can get the Kudatakes on... I believe Jet Pins and Amazon. Um, I will have links to both in the description if you are interested in either one of them. The Fine Tech by far has a lot more colors. They have a lot more ranges. They have multiple sets, six sets, gold sets, earth tone sets. Their website has like pastel and vintage sets. Um, as far as I know, the Kudatake has their, um, their regular watercolors, but we're not talking about those. They have the starry colors, the pearlescent colors, and then the gem colors, which is what these are. Um, so they have three different six sets, and then they also have their watercolors, which again are separate. You can also buy both of these open stock, so if you run out of your favorite color, you are super able to just go out and buy it again. I think the biggest difference for me is the fact that these come in such different tins. This one actually comes with, you know, a lid and a little mixing palette, and it's metal, so it's really sturdy. Whereas this Kudatake one comes in cardboard, and while there's nothing wrong with cardboard in and of itself, um, you know, because some people care more about, you know, the packaging and stuff, I just don't see it working out for me in the long run. Because, um, you know, if you have to spritz these with water, it could get all moldy, and that's not really fun. Um, 
but I suppose the tins could get moldy too. But anyway, I just feel like in comparison, like as far as what they come in, the fine text definitely have the Kudatake's beat. Another thing to note, um, and this is the last thing before we swatch them out, is the Kudatakes actually, as you paint with them, give off a little bit of a fishy smell, which I find very strange. Uh, the fine text just smell like regular paint, and you don't even notice it unless you're, like, shoving your nose in them. Um, these ones you will notice when you paint. And it's not, like, super bad, like a alcohol marker or something. It's just you kind of get a little whiff of it every once in a while, and it's like, what's that? So, anyway, let's swatch these out. I do already have them pre-swatched out onto black paper, but we're going to be swatching them out on some white paper today. And I'm just going to be using my water brush just to make my life a thousand percent easier. So first off, actually, I want to swatch the kuretakes. So um, you want to kind of mix them around in there to just to make sure you've got it going. And I just love how creamy it is. Just like, oh, so good. Anyway, I am in love with paints like these. <laughs> They're super nice. All right. Oh, and it's so sparkly. Now, my camera may or may not show up how sparkly it is. I honestly have no clue. Um, we shall see. All right, next one is this pink. But yeah, for each one of these, you kind of want to get it going even after you've added the water, just to make sure you're getting the full payoff that you deserve. This pink is kind of disappointing, I'm not even going to lie. Did I not get it going enough? Ooh, get out of my way. Yeah, this pink is a little disappointing. The red wasn't, though. The red's really pretty. Well, on camera, the pink doesn't look very disappointing. Maybe it's just me. Now, if you have all three sets of the Kudatake, you will actually get two duplicates. You will be getting a duplicate of this one, which is 903. It's called... Uh, yellow gold, I believe, and it is also in the starry color set. And then if you have the pearlescent set, you'll get a duplicate of the silver, um, which is also in the starry color. So basically, the starry colors are the ones that give you the duplicates. <laughs> I actually bought my starry colors first, so technically these are the ones that have the duplicates. But I think they work well for the sets that they're introduced in, so it's not like it's a big deal. Plus, I mean, like, you can't go wrong with gold and silver, so... You can never have enough of those. Also, I am high key in love with this gold. Look how pretty it is. You may not be able to see all the shimmer because my lights are like ridiculous. I'll try my best to get like a really good overview for you guys. All right, those were the Kudatake colors. Now I'm going to be moving on to the Fine Tex. Um, these have actually been sitting a little longer, so they may be a little more opaque, but that's okay. Oh, just look at how creamy. So as I'm swatching them out, just kind of like I don't know, as I'm noticing it, you know, the fine tags are really nice. They're super opaque. <laughs> um, and I feel like these re-wet a lot easier, like, even though you have to let them sit, I don't have to just, like, scrub at them continually. I can just go in, and bam, they're super opaque. And this pink is a lot more, um, technically it's called purple, but it's definitely pink, even though it looks red in the camera. That's very strange. Um, it's a lot less disappointing than the Kudatake one. <laughs> Now, the fine tech set doesn't actually have a green, so we're just using this, like, turquoise color called Caribbean green or Caribbean green. 
Um, just to kind of supplement the fact that uh, this one doesn't have a green. So I guess it, this isn't necessarily a fair fight, but that's okay. It's similar enough. All right, now here are the swatches. I'm going to dry these and come back, and then we'll talk. All right, it's time for the moment of truth. All right, here's the shine on these. Again, my camera is totally butchering this for you. Uh, they are so much more shimmery in real life. Now, okay, the camera is not going to be able to pick this up, so I'm going to have to really talk you through a lot of this, but okay. With the Kudatake colors, it's they're very different. Like, they're very similar, but they're also very different. So... With the Kudetake colors, they pretty much always, no matter which way you turn it, they always keep the color that they're supposed to be in view, if that makes sense. So, like, so all of these colors, you know, no matter which way you turn it, you can still see the color. Um, but the fine tags are very different, so if you turn them downwards, they get darker, and if you turn them toward the light, the mica shines through, and then you get the color. So, they're very different in that. I feel like the mica in the fine text is a lot more dense, so you get a lot more of it in just like one concentrated area. Whereas with the Kudatake paints, um, they're a little bit more sparse, and you can kind of tell that with, you know, some of the streaking. And that could have just been because I added too much water. I'm not really sure. With the Kudatakes, they are a little bit more transparent, at least on white, than the fine text are. These are very highly opaque. Um, I think one of the main differences is, well, number one, the price, but the other thing is to... Again, it's like I mentioned, I feel like the Kudatakes are a little brighter, like, in the just overallness of it. Like, the hue is just brighter. Um, whereas the fine are a little bit darker, and not that that's bad. I feel like both of these would have a use for whatever painting you're working with, but... With the fine text, the color is in the micas and not in the actual paint itself, whereas I think Kudatake has the color in the micas and in the paint, if that makes any sense. Another thing I wanted to show you real quick are the swatches on black. As you can tell, they're both very highly opaque. And this is where the Kudatakes kind of, in my opinion, start to kind of outshine the fine text. Because they still achieve that very bright, like, lightness to them. Um, and they're very similar to the fine text, especially on the black swatches. Um, again, I'm not really quite sure, but this purpley red looks a lot more close to this in real life. Um, and of course, you know, you can't really match these two greens. But in my opinion, on the darks, that is where the Kudatakes really shine. Um, so if I had to pick, honestly, I think the Fine Tech does a better job on the white, and I think the Kudatakes do a better job on the black paper. So uh, it really just depends on, you know, how you want to see that. And of course, you know, with the Fine Tech, it, this one in particular does come with more colors. So if you're looking for just a bunch of colors and stuff, you know, and there's the Fine Tech. However, if you're looking for um, either very opaque, bright colors or something a little less expensive than the Fine Techs, uh, you know, I would go with the Kudatake. Honestly, they're both great sets. They both work well for, you know, whatever you want, really. Um, and with the Kudatakes on white, you could have totally layer them up, too. It's not like you can't do that. So, all in all, I think they're both great sets. They work for, you know, each artist differently. And which set you pick really will depend on a lot of factors. Your financial budget, how accessible they are to you, and all that stuff. So, honestly, I think they're both great sets. And, again, I own them both, and I would highly recommend them both. So, and heck, I would recommend them both together like I have them because you know you don't always want to try to prep forever with you know maybe the fine text or you maybe want something a little bit more opaque on dark paper like the Kudatake. So anyway I hope this versus series was helpful. I hope it helped you form a little bit of a thought um, on whether you are even interested in these paints or not. Um, I really do enjoy them both. They're both absolutely stunning and I'm just super obsessed with shiny paints so yeah, look forward to individual reviews on both of these. But yeah, um, thank you so much for watching. If you are already a part of our cute squid pod, there is a subscribe button down below, as well as a bell button next to that subscribe button. If you click that, you get to join the squid pod notification squad. Also, uh, if you're not following me on any and all of my social media, there will be links in the description below. And until next time, my adorable squidlings, toodaloo!